What is up, guys? Doubles back here on the brand new video, and today I was able to get back on the closed alpha for Azeroth the War, which is the 20 playable races, custom stuff like ogres and naga server, and uh, I wanted to show you guys the changes to the ogre necromancer, including some stuff that was actually inspired by my idea. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's jump right in. Okay guys, so we are back on the Ogre Necromancer from a couple months ago because Azeroth at War is currently doing a closed alpha for a select group of people. And then roughly a month from now, I believe they're gonna be doing more like a closed beta that has like a, almost a thousand people in it, right? So there's gonna be a lot more people to play with, but they want some more feedback. And you know what? I wanted to show you guys what they've done on the Necromancer since last time we played. Now, last time I played with them, I actually shared with them my idea for a Necromancer that I have been working on for a little bit. Nothing like a, like a research essay or something like like that, but decently worked on a bit, and they actually were inspired by it, because my idea was to have a warrior skeleton, an archer skeleton, and a mage skeleton, but my idea was that you could have two up at a time, and any combination of the two would give you different buffs. And then of course you can end up replacing these with special summons that you get through your talents. Good examples might be the one I end up showing you with this spec, which is the Archmage, or maybe the Abomination, right, that you get over here from the other spec. But you could have two at a time, and that way you could have a bunch of undead summons up all the time and they didn't do that part maybe that's really hard to code maybe they're still working on that but i still found it very interesting that they went with this in the very very closed alpha to begin with because again it was my idea i'm really 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 excited to see some of my ideas get implemented i always am at the moment though you have to pick one so you can have a regular skelly right now this is what we could have last time okay but you can also now choose from a skeleton archer which has a shoot ability and we can also get a skeleton mage which has mana burst restoring your my mana actually actually, interestingly enough, and Frost Armor, which gives it to me and the Necromancer. Oh, that is really, really interesting. Now, you can only imagine if they went with my idea of having two summons up at a time, how interesting it could be, actually, to have, like, two pet bars of abilities and have to, like, finagle that. I think that would be a high skill cap class. I think it's something people would be really excited to play with, but... With that aside, there are a bunch of changes. There were almost no abilities on the Necromancer before, but quite a few things have changed, including the talents. Not everything is perfect yet. It's still super closed alpha. We're still literally copying and pasting over Arcane Mage talents, right? With the Netherwind Presence, the Arcane Mind, and the uh, Mind Mastery. But some of this stuff is actually 100% unique and custom, and actually most of it as far as I can see. I will have some comments on it because my videos are the way that I give my feedback for these guys. But for this guy, we're already level 59. It's the guy that I had last time, and I want to comment on the idea that if you look around Razor Hill right now, you could see it's much more populated, right? So they've been working on this even more. The whole idea for them, and this is what the uh, main guy, Gromash, who is like the Dutch of uh, Azeroth at War, told me, is that they want the world to feel alive, okay? They don't want it to be quite as fast XP as Dusthaven, but they don't want it to be super duper slow like OG Vanilla. Tell me what you think in the comment section below, but I believe he told me that they're shooting for a casual player reaching max level somewhere between 40 and 50 hours of playtime. Time, right? So that's not that bad, I think. I actually think that's a solid middle ground. Some of you guys might want it slower, though. Some of you guys might want it faster, believe it or not. So let me know in the comment section below what you think. I'm sure they'll look at that kind of stuff. But I do like this idea. You know, you have like a caravan Kodo, which makes sense. It's hauling supplies. You've got orcish commoners. You've got troll commoners. They're doing their thing at the fire, talking to each other over there by the inn. And I do really, really like the concept. We saw this when we played the Alliance as well. So uh, who knows how the world will end up looking at the end of it all. You know what I mean? Now, another thing they added is they finally added necromancer trainers to select locations for now one of which is razor hill so i can show you that guy so if you go in the orcish burrow right here right where the rogue trainer would be upstairs or in the pet trainers right there as well the hunter trainer we've got a necromancer trainer and it's helcular i don't know if that name will stick but i believe that guy is actually from a quest line all the way over here in hillsbrad foothills i could be wrong but i think i'm not wrong you get it from terran mill now, I have all the abilities that we have for now on this guy, and it's not the full kit. You have to know it's not the full kit just from looking at it, but it gives you an idea of where they want to push this. I want to start off by just looking at the Grave Desecrator spec. Kind of like my last video, except this time there's a lot more changes to it. So first of all, before we go over the spec, I think we should definitely go over the few abilities that we do have. So we have Grave Desecrator, and we have Grave Keeper. In the Grave Desecrator spec, I have, this is from my talents, and so we'll go over this, but the ability to increase my creature's intellect by, it looks like 15%, but it's 
stacks so I can put it on this guy twice. If it was ever possible to do my idea where the Necro gets two pets, wouldn't it be neat if you could decide, do I want to stack it up on one guy or give it to two of them? You know what I mean? Then we have Skeletal Archmage. I guess I'll go ahead and summon him. This guy comes from the Grave Desecrator talents that we'll go over in a moment as well. This is like an uber powerful version, I, I assume, of the Summon Mage spell. So you can see this guy. He has what he had before, Death Bolt, which restores his mana and does shadow damage, and a five second stun, but it's a web for some reason. Of course, a lot of this is placeholder right now, giving you guys the idea of what they want to do. They'll rename it, give it proper icons and stuff later on. They've already worked on it between the last alpha and this one, so I think that's pretty interesting. That's a very powerful stun. And you have to think, even though I don't have that many abilities, I can imagine that a lot of what the utility of the Necromancer will come from is their pets, and so you have to keep that in mind. So I'm keeping that in mind, thinking to myself, okay, maybe we'll get another dozen abilities because the rest of it will come from the pets. So it'll seem like less than other classes, but it's even more than a warlock in that regard because you'll have so many pets with their unique effects. That's my idea, that's what I think. Now, I told you guys about Summon Skelly, Archer, and Maid, but we have a new ability called Curse of the Black Mirror. Curse an enemy, so that every time they do damage, there is a 20% chance that a shade will spawn and attack them. I think that's pretty cool. It's on a one minute cooldown. Let's go see if we can put it on a boar and check that out and I'll read out the next one. Now we also have Frost Prison, okay? So this is literally Frost Nova at the moment, although I'd like to see that, you know, a little bit more creative. Maybe a single target, more like Entangling Roots, amp up how much damage they can take before it actually breaks, and then I think you really have something really interesting and unique, because if it's a prison, it should be on one guy, but you can see it right here, it's literally Nova. Now, here's this thing right here, Curse of the Black Mirror, so it doesn't do damage to them, but as they attack me, look at that, it summoned the Shade Insta, and the Shade did damage to them, did you see that? And by the way, you'll notice I summoned Skellies with that as well. We'll get into the talents that make that happen. That was already very powerful. I mean, right off the bat, it's a 20% chance, but it immediately summoned that. You can see the stun right here. My pet's out of range. Get closer. There you go. So there's the little stun on that guy. Let's make him back off for a second. You see, that was actually pretty interesting. And this is the death bolt. There we go. We're gonna need some capitalization and stuff like that. I don't like it that people think that that's not a big deal, because I ended up being right about it when it comes to Dusthaven, right? Like, at the end of the day, it's a mark of quality to spell things right and have good uh, grammar, you know what I mean? And it goes for everything. But again, this is super closed alpha, so they have literally every excuse in the world for there to be tiny mistakes here and there, so I'm not gonna harp on it too much until we get to, like, open beta, where we're like, oh shit, the game's coming out in three months, we gotta clean this up, you know what I mean? But it's a very cool concept. There's a lot of these spawny mechanics. There's Life Bolt, by the way, and it's summon some guys. Again, we'll go over that. But it's pretty interesting, right? Like, closed alpha, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep saying it. Now, we have a lich form. This looks like it's not a moon can form. It's just like Avenging Wrath. You turn into a lich for a short duration, 25% more spell power, right? Two minute cooldown, I can use it. It looks like it's a 30 second duration. It looks like it increases your pet's damage by 30% with this tooltip and your intellect by 25%. That would be an interesting way to go about things rather than just giving you flat damage increase like it says right here. Obviously, we have no idea which one. Uh, it looks like it's the first one up here though because I can see it on my pet. So that's very interesting. And for now, it's like the Kel'Thuzad look, you know? but my staff is in my hand. That's cool. Now, they've changed the uh, icon of Life Bolt, although I'm assuming that's placeholder because it's just like a green-tinted Shadow Bolt. But if we look at this, it's still very interesting, right? Three-second cooldown, talented, and it does mild damage. So you can see it right here. It looks like a death coil, but you cast it. Then we have the whole mana conversion, soul conversion stuff. We went over this in my very first video for it. I personally thought that this was very in line with original vanilla because it was slow. There is no mana regen on the Necro, it seems. All of it comes from how you you play. So you have to literally drain the life of your demon, or your undead, right, demon, lol, like a warlock, to get mana back. And then if you want to actually not kill your guy, right, like see how he's about to die because I just drained him, what you're going to want to do is soul conversion to get all that health back. It's kind of like a drain life that goes not just to you, but to your pet as well. I personally think that if they keep going with everything I've said so far, Necromancer is going to be a really, really high skill cap class, quite frankly, and I think that might be super enjoyable to quite a bit of people. Because I think one of the things is, when you create a brand new class, let's just say, and it's overpowered and takes no skill, it makes people think there's not much into it, right? You just added stuff, you know? But if you create a brand new class and there's enough depth to it to where people can really sense the skill cap, I think that's important. Now, I know we're in closed alpha, so don't think to yourself it's done. It's not, like I said, I'm gonna harp on it. But I do think, conceptually speaking, if you take everything I just said into effect, I think we're on to something with this one, and I really do like the initial design. Now, that was everything in the Grave Desecrator spec. I only have two abilities in Grave Keeper, one of which is Curse of Corruption. I hope they change that icon. I'm sure they will, but it's just a 20-second cooldown 
massive cooldown, shadow damage over time spell. And this is important too, because some of the, you know, naysayers of the Necromancer, I don't, I don't get why people do this, man, but some of them will say, well, you can't do a Necro because it's either too close to Death Knight or too close to Warlock. My response always is, you don't have any creativity if you think that. There's many things you could do. One of which is you don't give the Necro nothing but dots. But you could still give them dots, just give it a long cooldown and make it do a lot of damage and call it Curse of Corruption. I like that, and make it an actual curse. Now, I have one more cool ability I can show you guys. Enter the Shadowlands. Really, really nice. A little ode to the actual last expansion that wasn't too great, but still. But you and your target enter the Shadowlands, which is something that I think warriors have as well on retail, it's conceptually, right? It's only a 12-second cooldown, though, so this is really interesting. And you only go in there for four seconds. So we enter the Shadowlands, and me and this boar are in here with my pet and nothing else. I think that's neat. Now, all of this balance and stuff's gonna have to be worked on throughout the alpha. Is four seconds too short? Is 12-second cooldown too short. We'll figure it out. But conceptually, I think it's quite good. Now, with all of that being said, uh, I went over most of these talents in the last video, but I will go over some of the new things. So there's this one. Uh, again, names are placeholder. Snowballing Life Bolt, literally named literally to be what it's supposed to do. Every Life Bolt means the next one does 10% more damage, stacking up to five times. So every time you Life Bolt, it just gets stronger. Now, not a new one, but definitely impactful, and you saw it a little bit when I was testing stuff. When you do spell damage, you have a 15% chance to summon two Skellies to help you in battle, so you're constantly summoning new guys. Now we have Hit Chance Talent, Master of the Dead we tried in the last video, so when you kill something, you summon a Haunting Spirit. Now it looks like a lot of these talents actually scale with Total Intellect for now. So we have things like Acolytes, increasing your pet's attack power and range attack power by 20% of your stamina. Okay, that's not intellect based, but there was one that was intellect based. Oh, it's this one, right? Uh, this was for you though. Increase your spell damage by an amount equal to 25% of your intellect. Then they still have the same mind mastery over here. I'm sure that'll be replaced, but they have things like regenerating mana equal to 10% of your intellect. They said this was intentional, although I think it's ugly personally, and I want to see the lich form we just saw on the bottom of the tree. But again, closed alpha, we'll see. But yeah, everything else is basically the way you guys remember it. But we also have Curse of the Vampire. Now, this is definitely underpowered. It's interesting, though, and I didn't show it to you guys yet. So let me go ahead and show it to you on the Scorpion. Basically, you put it up on this guy, and they take 15% less healing for 30 seconds. Now, it does last a long time, but the healing reduction is kind of mid. I would still, if you're going to do it like that, I would say 30% for 30 seconds. And even then, I think some people might wonder if that's too small. We'll have to test it against other classes to really know. But you can see I summon Skellies right there. And ultimately, you'll end up with a skeleton army, a necro army. You're summoning wraiths that are attacking people with your uh, Curse of the Black Mirror. And I would say for a Grave Desecrator Necro enclosed alpha, it's going really, really well. And of course, I'm on an ogre. And by the way, there's some new ogre stuff. For example, I have a laugh. I also have a roar. Look. Interesting. And I was told a lot of this stuff is actually made um, by them. It's unique to them, right? So they're not just finding it from other games or something like that. Uh, they're doing it their own way, and that's very interesting to me. And of course, we know we have the standard dance that they've always had. Not obviously unique, but still really fun to see. And yeah, we'll see what ends up happening. They're currently working on all sorts of stuff, polishing things, adding the emote sounds, um, you know, making it to where everybody has animations and they can actually wield things properly. It's making me feel like this is actually going to be quality when it comes out. So that's what I'm kind of thinking right now. Now, Gravekeeper is a lot different than what it was before. Like you can see the final talent literally doubles your total health. It looks like it's going to be a dedicated tank spec and it's going to be melee based. So we'll check it out real quick because why not? See if there's anything new from the last video. So I can unlearn my stuff for free right Right now, go into Gravekeeper. So you get Necrotic Strike immediately, which is an instant strike that does 80% weapon damage. It's kind of like your Life Bolt, and you actually attack with your Stave right now. So you have Staff Spec, which is like old school Balance Druid type of stuff, including the ability to stun your target when attacking with your Staff. So this is very interesting. I'll go into Staff Spec. Every time you do melee damage, you summon Skelly, so it's the same concept. Your auto attacks do 4% more shadow damage, up to 20%. Okay, actually, no. Yeah, it is 20%. Melee attacking gives you a, let's see, 50% chance to drain 10% health from the enemy. I think that's really interesting for a tank, you know? And it definitely is a tank. There's some garbage in here that I hope gets removed, like giving your pet an increased chance to detect invisible enemies. Increases your attack power by a percentage of your intellect. That's really cool. We also now have creature control abomination. So we have an abomination pet when we tank. We have abomination hook, which is a 35 second cooldown, basically death grip that does damage. Okay, I'll take that. Every time you damage a target, there's a chance to summon a crypt scarab. That's really cool. And then we also have the ability to summon blood worms, like blood decays. So you can see, just doing normal stuff with your class should make it really fun in this regard. We'll just summon new stuff. 
I love that. You know, if this ends up being a fairly simple tank, you have the same concept here, by the way, but increasing stamina for your pet. If this ends up being a simple tank that's just doing simple strikes, right, with a lot of HP, life drain, and a bunch of creatures that you're summoning, although we'll have to figure out ways to make the things you summon relevant, right? Like maybe every Crypt Scarab gives you damage reduction. Right now, the blood worms obviously heal you. So these are the type of things that we'll have to give feedback for in the alpha. I already like that Crypt Scarab idea, by the way. This reduces all damage your minion takes. That's probably not going to be too good. Oh, interesting. You have another ability here. Curse of Impotence, lol. Reduce damage done by 20% on the target for 15 seconds. So only 5 seconds of the fight will they not be doing 20% less damage. That's kind of broken. That's nutty, actually. Then we can actually transform into a Flesh Golem. And then, of course, we double our total health. You can literally see it double. Wow. So I'll just fill this stuff out out with some other stuff increase your armor contribution from items i mean this is already like all very overpowered i feel like but it'll get you know toned down but as you can see we've got a bunch of new stuff so let's just check that out so first of all flesh golem form now it used to be abomination form now i turn into this ugly monstrosity looks like stalag and uh fugin and stuff like that at least the cards from hearthstone so okay and when i walk you can hear the ground shake holy crap dude increases my stamina by 25 percent that's nuts now i have creature control abomination as well let's summon the abomination and then we we have the hook we can figure out. We have necrotic strike. And I'd still like to see a way to make it to where spamming necrotic strike will give you a free life bolt. But this will come over time. Remember, this is far from finished. Okay, so the abomination. So first of all, abomination hook. It's interesting because it has a cast time. There's the necrotic strike. It's already summoned skeletons. Already summoned the uh, worms as well. All right, there goes the A-bomb, by the way. And he has plague strike. And he regenerates his mana when he attacks. And he has a taunt for now. So let's see. I can uh, hook this guy in a moment. And then we'll go for the necrotic strike. And we'll see how this all works out, right? I can actually see this being a very interesting tank spec. It's going to need AoE. It's going to need a lot more done to it, obviously, with time. But it's very interesting. I do like it. Conceptually speaking, I like it. Although I do think over time, I wonder if the staff synergy should be there. If you should just let them use 2H swords or something like that and then add the weapons but again they'll get there when they get there type of stuff but again I can also put this on my guy increasing my A-bomb stamina you can see he has the buff right there increases his stamina by 30% and yeah it's still definitely closed alpha necro but I like it so far I think a lot of cool things have been done to it and I thought it was worth showing off you know let me know what you guys think though um and you know what we'll be able to do some more open beta stuff in a few months time again the bigger uh closed beta in one month time but if you guys enjoyed another look at the ogre necromancer now a month and a half after the last one ish uh make sure to give the video a like and a subscribe major thanks to all the members on my channel love and appreciate you guys we'll see all of you on the next one big doubles out